will have a ball and then then I don't know what to do from that from there I had it in my head and then I forgot the side view and there'll be two of these and then except this will be wide right here and a slot right here and I will wedge it right there and there'll be two of them side by side and then the photo frame can fit like that and then your eyeballs will be looking right at it that's how you design a picture frame hole Hey, welcome back to a new episode where I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from the normal sharp and pointy dangerous things. I'm going to be making a picture frame holder as a birthday present for a friend of mine. And it's basically the design is going to have an S shape with balls on the end of them and the picture uh, frame will sit into that. I'm going to be using wrought iron. But the whole reason that I'm doing this and I'm not working on axes or forging knives or anything is because beloved Audrey has passed away. Rest in peace. I don't know why I'm smiling when my brush just died. Um, so we can't forge axes. And instead of wasting time, I figure we can make a cool project that's different and can utilize some other skills and techniques that I haven't used in a while. So let's get started. Got this marked out now at seven and a half inches on either side. That should give me, uh, I think, enough material for a picture frame holder. This is some old wrought iron that came from England. It was used in gates and railings and stuff like that. So wrought iron is a really neat material. It is soft, I mean, in comparison to steel. And it has grain to it, like, kind of like wood. So. I'm gonna break this open and you'll actually be able to see the fibrous structure of the steel. See how uh, it actually kind of comes out of the steel like that, or the wrought iron I should say. Whereas if it were steel, it would, um, it would be more of a smooth, clean face where it broke there. There's not really a very specific reason that I'm using wrought iron for this project, other than that was the material size, the, the appropriate material size for what I need to make this happened to be wrought iron. So um, the advantages though is that it is cool just for the fact that it's wrought iron and you can't, it's not manufactured anymore. It's an old world material. It's softer to use, it's softer to forge, but one disadvantage can be that if you forge it too cold, or even if it's just bad luck, you have a poor quality wrought iron, it can come apart <laughs> just randomly, which is really not ideal. So I do have to be careful working this stuff. Ah! Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It sprayed, it had an upward spray. It messed me it's up. It's over here. Liam, it's behind you. Bullseye. Yeah. He can remain there with his other friend. I think 
think one of the challenges for me is going to be getting the size of the balls on the end of, um, even, same diameter. That's just going to come down to having the same amount of material on all of them. a pretty good idea of where to start and stop the material for the balls on the end. We're now ready for the first heat. I'm just going to be isolating the material on the end for the balls and I'll be using uh, the edge of my hammer and the edge of my hand face. Trying to accurately uh, line those up as I can. See how soft the rod iron is. When it gets to about this temperature, this color, I'm going to stop hammering on it just because the rod iron is uh, can be temperamental when it gets a little cold. You can actually see the grain in the rod iron right there. It's cool. You can the layers of the scale there. The grain of the steel. The next step for me is going to be drawing out the material between the ends here to the appropriate length and size and thickness for the uh, picture frame. And I need to get that. That is really important. I need to get that right because that weight distribution could affect if the picture frame stands up or falls down. when it gets cold.
Nothing that an old grinding belt and some copper wire can't fix. test this out first before I connect them to see if the balance is right to see if when I put a picture on there that it doesn't fall over because I'm actually not so sure that 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 this will work so I need to go find a picture it is time to test out the picture frame I have it on my magnetic chuck, but the magnet's not actually on, so it's not holding it up. Basically, what I want to see is that this whole thing doesn't just tip over when I put a picture frame in it. And let's see. It works. It's magical. Yeah. So, quit kicking my service grinder, Jacob. I will fire you. Alrighty, so now that we know that that is actually going to work and not fall over when my buddy puts his picture frame in it, 
I am ready to go on and actually connect them together as one solid picture frame holder. But we're going to save that for the next video. So if you did enjoy this video, let us know in the comments below. And be sure to share it with your friends because if you don't share it with your friends, it's really hard for us to grow the channel and keep making more videos and keep doing cool, weird stuff like this. So we really appreciate that when you do share with your friends. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Toss it in the air? Yeah? No? Huh? You're going to toss it in the air? There you go.